Hey there, pet parent. My guest today is Erin Scott, and I am so excited to bring her to you today for a number of reasons. Erin is the creator of the Believe in Dog podcast, where she shares heart-centered conversations, exploring the profound impact that the love of a dog has made in each of her guests' life. Her very first episode, actually, I think the very couple of first episodes, she shares her own story as to why dogs have made, how dogs have made such an incredible difference in her life and led her to starting the Believe in Dog podcast. I have to say it has brought me to tears on more than one occasion, but not bad tears, good tears. The topics on the Believe in Dog podcast range from dog training methods to cutting edge veterinary research, the impacts of poverty on pet ownership, and every and anything in between. More recently, Erin co-hosts another podcast called the Alternative Dog Moms Podcast with Kimberly Gautier, who we have had on the Pet Parenting Reset multiple times now. The Alternative Dog Moms Podcast is perfect for Erin as a self-proclaimed dog health nerd. (laughs) And she and Kimberly explore what's happening in the fresh food community and the pet industry as a whole. The tagline to the Believe in Dog podcast is, I believe a dog can be a healer, a teacher, and an inspiration. And I really want you to take that to heart as we begin this journey into the interview with Erin Scott. Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Well, Erin, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm so excited to finally be meeting you. You are the host, well, you're the host of the Believe in Dog podcast, but you're also the co-host of the Alternative Dog Moms podcast, which is actually how I found you. Um, Okay. (laughs) So I'd love for you to talk a little bit and tell our listeners what like what led you and I I've listened to like your beginning episodes so I know this story but just like a quick rundown of how you came to be where you are today and what made you start the believe in dog podcast and like what your what your hopes are for people that listen to it because I I found it to be I've cried a few times (laughs) I hope in a good way (laughs) yeah Yeah, absolutely. But I have definitely, like, unexpectedly cried a few times. Like, I even, and this is so silly, even the episode with Billy Hochman, I was like, why am I crying about this? (laughs) I think you just have a different spin that you put on things. And there's just so much heartfelt emotion that goes into what you put out into the world. And I think that's what was like, why am I crying so much? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, I hope that that comes through, although it's never my goal to make anybody cry. <laughs> um, you know, I had a really interesting introduction to dogs. I did not grow up with dogs. Um, I always joke that I was a reluctant dog owner because it was totally my husband's idea. And we weren't even, we were still engaged. We weren't actually married at the time and that we bought our first house and, uh, and he had always wanted a dog and he had his Heart specifically set on wanting a female brindle pit bull. And so we, we uh, settled on our house on July 1st, uh, many, many moons ago. And uh, I think like on like July 4th weekend, I checked our local Humane Society's website and bam, right there, first page, female brindle pit bull. And so I felt like, okay, it was kind of like meant to be kind of thing. And uh and so that was, how, you know, our first dog, Lucy, who is the podcast logo for uh, Believe in Dog, uh, the artwork. And she really changed my life. 
in a completely just unexpected way. And we had gone through a lot of unexpected loss in our lives the year before we had adopted Lucy. And so we were in, you know, an emotionally like really struggling point. We had unexpectedly lost several people um, in my husband's family in completely unrelated, you know, ways. And, uh, and then we bought a house and got engaged and like all these life transitions and, and things were a little crazy and stressful. And sometimes it was bringing out kind of like the worst of our coping skills when you're under like all of this like stress. And so having Lucy and then the following year we adopted Kalua, you know, they were really a bright spot in, in what was a really hard time in our lives. And, and sort of over time, I was able to kind of start focusing on like what had been lost. And I was really able to be grateful for each day and look forward to coming home to these dogs. And, and it really just, you know, completely won my heart over. And, you know, and I started volunteering in Baltimore and just really get, got immersed into the dog world and like met all these cool people. And then you kind of fast forward to uh, 2018 is uh, when I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And around that same time, some friends of mine started doing their own podcast. It was about like dating. It was very silly. It's kind of like dating horror stories and stuff. And, And it seemed very like doable. And, you know, my husband and I would have these conversations sometimes where we'd talk about, you know, Lucy and Kalua have, have both passed on now. We have new dogs in our lives and just uh, how they have gotten us through these hard times. You know, my dog Penny is right next to me right now, and she really helped me through my breast cancer treatment. And, you know, there's sometimes a way that our pets can be there for us uh, in a way that that other people can't, um, even when they mean well, even though when they want to be, there's just something special about the way that our pets like let us be. (laughs) And, uh, and I would, you know, have these conversations and, and I was like, you know, I know all these interesting people. Like, I wonder like, who's the dog that affected their life, you know, like that inspired them to start this nonprofit organization that inspired them to start this company. You know, what did they go through? Um, that, you know, really led, you know, to, to them making this change in the world that's inspired by the love of a dog. And so that was really where the Believe in Dog podcast came from. And I, you know, I beat breast cancer. I became a breast cancer survivor the same week that I turned 40 years old. And I, it was kind of like this new chapter, new lease on life. And I was like, I'm, I'm going to do this. And I'm not somebody who's ever really put myself out into the world like that before. So it was kind of nerve wracking, but it's just one of the things I'm just most proud of. And I'm just so like, just astounded at at how this has all gone. And it's, it's just been a great thing. (laughs) Yeah. Well, congratulations, by the way, for beating breast cancer. (laughs) Like that's a big deal. (laughs) It really is. I mean, it's something that nobody ever wants to hear. And especially as young as you were, yeah, and I had never had a mammogram before. Like, it was all a complete shock. Yeah, I'm sure. Like, I I just turned 40. I could not imagine. Could not imagine. <laughs> and, I, I mean, obviously, like, you think about it. You think about what you would do, how things would go. I And I, and I feel like, okay, you, you do what you have to do to get through it. But... It it just it always makes me think. Anytime I think of anything like catastrophic in your in in my life, I'm like, what is going to happen to the pets? Like, am I going to have the energy? Am I going to have the time? Am I going to be physically present? Like that. Like it always worries me so much. I'm like, of course I have my husband. He can he can handle things, but it's like a survive not thrive mode. Right. <laughs> and um, especially with my cats because he's allergic to them. So it's like. Well, my cats would survive, <laughs> but would they really be thriving? It's scary. I'm really, I mean, congratulations. That's awesome. I'm so glad that <laughs> that's behind you. you. I mean, like, you know, there's always like, you always worry, I'm sure, a little bit, but I'm glad that's for the most part behind you and helped you to get to where you are today for sure. Um, so with the Believe in Dog podcast, this is, these are, these are stories of how dogs change people's lives. Right. And yeah. I think we all have that story. And I don't think we know a lot of us don't realize like how 
important it is to tell that story because our, our, all of our pets, I think I'm just a very firm believer that all of our pets, no matter how old you were, the pets we had in the past, pets that we haven't had yet come into our lives, they all come into our lives for a reason. And it's generally to teach us something. And hopefully we're there for it. And we do learn what we're supposed to <laughs> learn right, from it. Right. Um, I know like one of my cats, I tell people all the time, I'm like, I know, well, I, I live on this level of like, there's always something new to learn. I'm, I'm striving to continue to learn new things. But I have this one cat that is just like a constant in my face reminder of like, you have so much more to learn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know that feeling. <laughs> um, and I really love the tagline that you have for that. I hope, I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I got this right. I'm going to at least paraphrase. I believe a dog can be a healer, a teacher and an inspiration. Is that mm -hmm. right? Yeah. See, just even saying that makes me like, I want to tear up <laughs> because I'm remembering like listening to some of these episodes. I really hope people do go back and like start from the beginning. I know a lot of podcasts are like, well, you can, you know, these are different stories. You can pick up wherever you want. And I think that's true of, of your podcast, but like, I always like to start at the beginning and like binge a podcast <laughs> that I find. And I think that even if you skip around on the episodes of Believe in Dog, I think going back to your first episode or two is like, you need to do that <laughs> <laughs> to really like understand what this podcast is all about. And why you want to keep listening to it. Um, and I just want to say thank you so much for putting that into the world. And I know you said how hard it was for you. And it's kind of led you, you know, a few, a few years later, you also have the Alternative Dog Moms podcast with Kimberly Gautier, who I, I've had on the show a couple of times now. Um, she's, she's incredible. And yeah. I don't know where, I think she somehow has a few extra hours in her day than the rest of us do <laughs> <laughs> to get everything done. <laughs> right. Um, so how did that come about? And tell me a little bit about that podcast. Sure. So I, I couldn't even tell you how long ago it was that I started following Kimberly online. I mean, it has to go back to when I had Lucy and Kalua, our first dogs, uh, cause I, we, first started feeding raw, like unbeknownst to us, we, it was about a year and a half, like left before they both passed or about two years, I guess with Lucy. Um, and you know, there's not a lot, especially at that time, going back to 2014, I think, um, there wasn't a lot of people talking about feeding raw online. And especially as, uh, Luce and Kalua, of course, they were both, you know, 12, 13 years old at that time. You know, they both started having some different health issues. And I was trying to read about like how their diet could impact their health issues, you know. And so I'm sure that's how I somehow stumbled upon Kimberly, you know. And uh, and so she's just kind of always been on my radar and, you know, following her on social media and, you know, leaving comments. And then when I started the Believe in Dog podcast, you know, I had started with this list of like, I don't know, 50 people or something who I'm like, I've got to talk to these people. And, and of course she was on that list. She's one of the earlier episodes now. And, uh, and we just kind of had a great rapport and had a good time talking and, you know, uh, following each other on social media. And she was always very like encouraging t towards me. And so I think it was around this time last year, like right after the first of the year, she had just put a post up on Instagram like, hey, I think I want to do a podcast to talk about like the fresh feeding and alternative health stuff. Is anybody interested? And I'm looking around like, is, like, is this like a sign from the world, you know, from the <laughs> universe? Like, and I'm like messaging her right away like, yes, oh my God, yes, I'd love to, to do that. And um, so, you know, we just had like a couple calls and kind of uh, knocked out like kind of what our vision would be, you know, to both have guests as well as, you know, just kind of talk about like what's going on with our dogs, you know, are they having health issues? What are we doing about those health issues? Kind of like what's our approach? And then like, what are we learning? Uh, what are we seeing online? Like kind of that's newsworthy in the, you know, community that we follow and um, what are like the events we're going to? Who are the new people on our radar? New podcasts or blogs or, you know, to just kind of 
you know, chat, you know, share information, but also get to talk to, you know, cool people who are doing new and interesting and exciting things that, that everybody should know about. So I think it's a good mix. Yeah, for sure. I think I, and I, I didn't quite know that about you. It's so funny how like you meet people in your, your lives, like, overlap and you don't know it because I think it was 2000 it was definitely 2013 that I started playing around with my dog and cat's food and I was like cooking food I had no idea what I was doing so I was adding it to their kibble because I'm like I know I don't I know enough to know I don't know what I'm doing (laughs) and it didn't take us too terribly long to get from that to like okay, found Dr. Judy, I found her pup loaf, and I found Kimberly, and I found her, and that led me to Dr. Karen and Rodney and all these other places, so I definitely, I, like, I feel like I found Kimberly, like, right there at the beginning, just like you did, and started switching my dogs over to Raw, probably in the same, like, 2014-ish <laughs> year, um, and so that's just so interesting to me when you meet people and you're like, how have we not met before? <laughs> because we're all doing like the same things. But like, I know I'm like in my own little bubble and like, I have to do so much better with sharing my personal life online. <laughs> but um, yeah, both of the podcasts are incredible. I'm super excited for you and I mean, with both of the podcasts, but especially like, I really, really love like the banter between two like-minded people, you know, and having, having people, having someone there to like bounce information off of and bounce ideas off of, and you may not always a hundred percent agree and that's okay. And I think that makes for some of like the best episodes. So that's another reason why I really, really like the alternative dog moms podcast. So there's two podcasts now that people need to go. And if you're not already following them, make sure you follow them. And um, yeah, so there is one other thing that you have available to people. And I have been fortunate enough to look over, look over it. And it's so incredible. Um, and I know that you have it available for people to download with a small fee. Like, I mean, come on guys. Like, you know, support, support a girl. Right. And, um, so I will have the link in the show notes for that, but you guys, this is a bundle that is, you're going to get like journaling pages basically. And these journaling pages are to help you. And I know like I've talked to my audience about journaling before specifically with like other people that come on the podcast, because it's like so important. Like I, I, I want to, I know for sure I talked about it um, with Angela Ardolino. We were like, you need to be journaling what is going on with your dog, especially if they are having issues going on. And having a template for like what you need to be journaling about <laughs> can be so helpful for most pet parents. Cause I think most pet parents are like, you need to journal what's going on with your dog. And they're like, okay. And they just like, start writing like, oh, they were happy today and we went for a walk and oh, they had diarrhea today. and like, there's so much more that we need to know <laughs> and that your health, you have a health issue. Oh my gosh. Right. So this template is incredibly amazing. And then you also have the, um, veterinarian, like the, the checklist for when you're going to be going to the veterinarian. I know I used to be like this where I would have a bunch of questions and stupidly, I kept them all in my head. And by the time I got to the vet's office, I was like, you know, my vet's talking a mile a minute and I'm like, okay, yeah, thanks. <laughs> wouldn't ask anything I needed to ask. So tell me, tell me like, what made you create this? And you can probably do a little bit better justice to what it actually is. <laughs> so I call it the dog health journal and I'm working to get it to be like a physical journal that, you know, but it's taking me shockingly long period of time to, to figure that out, to transition it. So right now it's just a digital download. And so when you get the bundle, cause you can buy the, the kind of like the parts of it separately too. Um, but yeah, I like, you can do it all in the bundle and like save a dollar or two. Um, 
And so, yeah, so there's like the daily pages and, you know, like Penny has been battling this like double UTI. It's been crazy. Mm -hmm. So I have like uh, this whole system of like, she needs to get a probiotic at six in the morning. She has to get her antibiotics at 830 in the morning. You know, she has to get her thyroid pill at 4 p.m. You know, so it helps you kind of plan out like when do they need meals? When do they need supplements? When do they need medications? And, you know, and it's all very like you know, customizable, <laughs> um, for, for what your dog has going on. And, you know, like sometimes I'm like, oh, I'm going to increase her CBD and I want to see if that makes a difference. And so I can like make a note of like, oh, this is the day that I, you know, in doubled the CBD amount and, you know, was she too tired? And so there's like spaces to help you track, like, things like pee and poop and water intake because like Penny's had increased water intake recently and, and then to, you know, like, let's say you're dealing with like a wound issue. There's kind of like a prompt to remind you to like take a photo of that because that's, I, I feel like all of this is designed out of lessons I've learned the hard way <laughs> in uh, almost 20 years of being a dog mom. And so it's like, I want to be able to, like, I want to take a photo of something at the same time every day and then be able to track like over the course of the week. Does it look better? Does it look worse? You know, do I need to go back to the vet? Are they limping and I need to get a video of this because it's intermittent and I know they're not going to do it when I take them to the vet. So I try to remind myself about a video. Um, so I try to have different prompts, you know, for whatever could possibly be going on in your, you know, pet's health life. And then, yeah, and then there's the vet visit pages, which, again, all of this is from things I've learned the hard way. I forgot to get a refill. I forgot to ask questions. And so it will prompt you to you know do all those things, ask all those things, make sure you're getting copies of like your pet's blood work or any x-rays or anything. Cause so I think it's really important to track this. Like when we go home and all we get is like this printout of like the, the payment, like what they charged us for everything. And then like a year from now, you're like, what even was that, you know? And so, um, and then there's another little handout on kind of like how to keep track of your pet's medical records and, you know, get like a folder or a binder going. And uh, and then I, I also have like a, a little booklet in there, too, of like the things to look for. So hopefully the journal will help you keep track of all these things, like changes in their water intake, changes in their poop habits. And I even give you like some different bullet points of like, well, what are you looking for? You know, <laughs> and uh you know, and one of, I think the biggest things is like a change in their routine, you know, like my guy Nino obsessed with chasing his ball. If there's ever a day where he doesn't want to chase the ball, like I know something's wrong, you know, Penny always wants to go for a car ride. If there's ever a day where she doesn't want to go in the car ride, I know something's wrong. And so I think that's like one of the most important things that we can be tracking is just like any changes uh, in our pet. And so hopefully this gives everybody a really great way to do that. Yeah, it is so important for their health. And I know like as a dog trainer, I have always encouraged my clients to do this with their training as well. Like, what mm -hmm. did you train today? How long did you train? How is your dog progressing? How are you progressing? Because quite honestly, dog training is people training. Yes. <laughs> I don't really want to hear that, but like, <laughs> I don't train dogs. I train people, but, um, to like track their progress because I can show up a week or two weeks later and they're like, they, they're like, Oh yeah, no, nothing, nothing has changed. And I'm interacting with the dog and I'm like, absolutely. Like there's so much change that I've seen going on, but if you're not like journaling it and you're not tracking it, you're not noticing the changes because they're, they're happening like right in front of you <laughs> and you take them for granted. Yeah. Um, so it's, it is, it's really important. And I really like, um, I like the pages. I like the bundle, how you bundle it all together. And there is a lot of instruction that you provide with it, which is, I think, where the real value lies. Um, it is like what you really should be looking for and like what questions should you be asking at the vet, you know, like really making you think about being on top of parenting your your dog or your cat. I think I think it could be pretty interchange is pretty interchangeable with dogs and cats. So um I've never yeah, had a cat, so I don't want to speak to that. <laughs> oh I you know I always thought I was a cat person until I had a dog. I I grew up with dogs but not like 
the way I have dogs now, like my, everybody I knew and my stepdad had hunting dogs, so they didn't even live indoors. And it was like a very different, it, it never sat right with me. So I was like, I didn't know that you should treat dogs differently. So I didn't want a dog because I didn't want to treat a dog that way. It was, you know, there's all these things that like yeah. shape you growing up. And um, it just always bothered me so much how the, how those dogs were treated. And I was like, well, I guess I don't want a dog. <laughs> but um, now that I have dogs, I'm like, I, I can't choose. I, I think dogs are easier than cats. Oh, so interesting. <laughs> Most people I know, when I when I, I tell people, like I said, happened to say that I think I think we were live with Jay and Adrian one day, the two crazy cat ladies, and I was like, "Oh, dogs are so much easier." They're like, "What? <laughs> you can't say that!" <laughs> I'm like, absolutely, dogs are so much easier than cats. <laughs> like, I would but, totally have a cat, but all of our dogs have been like very like prey drive uh kind of dogs and so i just always felt like i don't think that's the best fit for our house (laughs) yeah oh yeah oh my goodness um my my mom had a dog or has a dog had a cat and she had the hardest time he has the highest prey drive i've ever seen in a dog like literally ever and she had a really hard like she had to keep her cat in a section of the house she wouldn't allow her dog in um and yeah it that's a whole thing, but yeah, <laughs> I get it. I understand that <laughs> totally. Well, I'm just so thrilled that you came on today to tell people about Thank your you. story, about your podcast. I really hope people go download them now and start following um, because I don't think we can ever get enough information. I'm one of those people that it's like, I could never like pick a person and get information from them. Like I want to get information from like everybody I possibly can. Unless you just totally don't vibe with me that I'm like, okay, I'll see you later. (laughs) But I want to get information from everywhere I totally possibly can because you never know, like you're going to hear, you're going to hear something that's going to trigger your brain and you'd be like, oh my gosh, like, and you never know where you're going to hear that from. So I, I love that, like, you're just putting so much, so much good out into the world. And I love hearing all the stories about people and, and their dogs and how they, how their dogs changed their lives. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you. That's very kind. I'm so excited we got to do this. And, you know, I also think like I'm somebody who I'll like learn and retain information better if there's like a story behind it. Cause sometimes, you know, I think it's a good mix of like, you know, getting information for pet parents, you know, in addition to the story. And so like, for some reason, I think it helps me like stick in my head better when I'm like, Oh, you know, that was the girl who does physical therapy for dogs. And she said X, Y, Z. And I remember because of this and, you know, um, so yeah, so hopefully people can learn and, uh, be entertained at the same time. (laughs) Yeah. Well, that's the, that's the perfect podcast, right? That's the perfect recipe. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thank you so much, Erin. Where can people find you, follow you? Obviously the podcast, but is there anywhere yeah. else? Sure. Uh, I'm on Instagram at Believe in Dog Podcast. It has underscores uh, between each word. And uh, I'm also on Facebook, Believe in Dog Podcast, but I don't know. I seem to get more activity on Instagram, so I'm there more. <laughs> yeah, I, I I hear you on that. <laughs> on that. <laughs> Facebook is like really, I feel like Facebook is really dying out for pages. So I, I really, I try to put more energy on Instagram too. So yeah. I, I hear you. <laughs> well, I, again, I do hope everybody goes and downloads these podcasts. It's on everywhere, right? Apple, Spotify, yeah. Google, all the places. All the and places. All the places. Pick your favorite. Um, follow, download. I think you should start from the beginning with Believe in Dog um, and just go from there. I'm, I'm a binger, so... If you're a binger, start at the beginning. (laughs) I feel like it has like evolved some, you know, sometimes I'm like, oh, and I go back. (laughs) Oh, it's always like that. Oh my gosh. I cringe, like I cringe when I see like any of my videos on YouTube, but the old ones, the ones that are like seven years old, I'm like, please don't go watch that. (laughs) Please. I beg of you. (laughs) No, I get it. Um, so yes. Follow Aaron, listen to the podcast, 
And I don't know, who knows, maybe you will be inspired to do something incredibly amazing that you wind up on the Believe in Dog podcast one day. (laughs) Thank you again, Erin. I appreciate it. And um, make sure you guys give your pets some extra love from both me and Erin today. And I'll talk to you next week. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Make sure that you're following the show so you never miss an episode. And please take a moment to rate the show on your podcast app. I'd also love it if you'd share this podcast with your friends and family so that they can benefit from the information to help their pets live long, happy lives too. Don't forget to take advantage of this special discount as a listener today and get access to over 100 online videos and my online dog training, The Furry Family Coach. Just go to thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code podcast at checkout to get your first month for only $7. That's thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code podcast at checkout to get your first month for only $7. I can't wait to have you join and see you on the inside. Oh, oh, oh.